While some pioneers insist that aviation's next giant leap is all electric and all vertical, other innovators insist that the future of flight can be transformed more quickly by coupling incremental changes to propulsion with cutting edge aerodynamics. This approach sees expanding the scope for air services to places that don't have major airports through so-called stall or short takeoff and landing operations. We're here in front of a one-third scale model of the Electra e Extreme Short Takeoff and Landing. It's a hybrid electric, nine passenger, blown lift, super short takeoff and landing aircraft that Electra.Aero is developing for the urban air mobility and the regional air mobility markets. The whole idea of this urban air mobility and regional air mobility is to get people, pick them up close to their point of origin and deliver them as close as possible to their point of destination. A lot of people assume that means you have to do vertical takeoff and landing, but vertical takeoff and landing is super expensive in terms of an energy point of view. What the Eastall does is use a traditional wing and distributed electric propulsion to provide something called blown lift, which dramatically increases the lift coefficients on the wing, that translates into slower flight speeds. That translates into very short takeoff and landing distances. We can get in and out of a 100 meter space with this airplane with up to nine passengers on it. The Electra airplane can use any existing airport, but it's really designed around uh, places like the Wall Street heliport. That's where the sort of 300 feet by 100 foot uh, number really comes from. That's the size of the available space uh, at the Wall Street heliport, which allows both the East Dole operations and would continue the traditional helicopter operations intermingled in that, uh, in that traffic flow. Electra believes its hybrid electric approach will mean operators could carry twice the payload and fly about 10 times further than new all battery electric Evitol aircraft. The company says its East Dole vehicle could potentially fly as far as a thousand nautical miles but could shake up the market for trips of anything between 20 and 200 miles by offering far greater flexibility at an affordable price. And the key to its success could be that it can make multiple trips without having to recharge or refuel during a working day. That translates directly into the operating cost for the airplane, right? If you're carrying nine seats and the competition is carrying four seats, your cost per seat mile it starts out at half the cost. And that's before you factor in all of the benefits of there's much less installed power, the system is very efficient, it's more easily certifiable because it's a traditional airplane, it doesn't fall into the powered lift category. You have to distinguish blown lift and powered lift. Um, it's manned, so it, uh, it has no autonomy that needs to be certified. You can fly it with a traditional uh, license and it requires no ground recharging infrastructure because it's a hybrid, you don't have to land at a power station uh, and sit there while you recharge the airplane. It's a hybrid electric system. That It's very much like a hybrid in a car. That means it has a set of batteries, it has a small gas turbine. The two of them work together to drive the eight electric motors that are distributed along the leading edge of the wing. In normal operations, those two are working together. It take off the battery and the, the turbo generator together power the aircraft. Each is sized, however, in a contingency situation that they could successfully complete a takeoff or landing if you lost the batteries or if you lost the turbo generator. So redundancy for safety. It allows you to certify an airplane with just one turbine in it, right? I mean, the reason the airplanes, uh, uh, turbines are driven, the operating cost of a turbine, the maintenance cost is basically how many turbines have you got. Uh, previous powered lift designs use multiple turbines. That's one of the reasons you don't see this technology in the field today, is it's not really practical until the advent of distributed electric. And we think it's, it's the leading candidate for how distributed electric really buys its way effectively into commercial aviation. The idea of the blown lift is that you take, you couple the propulsion system and the aerodynamics, right? In a traditional airplane, you build the airplane, stick an engine under the wing, um, if you want to change the engine, you change the engine out. They're, they're not particularly coupled at the integrated design level. What blown lift does is combine the aerodynamics of the propulsion by very careful positioning and design of both the propulsors and the wing. It uses an extensive flap system and the air flowing from the wing blows over that flap 
Effectively, what it does in the physics of it is it makes the wing look a lot larger than it physically is. And you can use that effect, that aerodynamic effect, either to make a much smaller wing, which allows you to cruise faster, which is the idea behind the NASA X57 Maxwell, or you can use it to make a bigger wing for very slow takeoff and landings and get into short spaces. That's how we're using blown lift on the Electra uh, airplane. So far, Electra says it's booked early sales commitments for around a thousand e-style aircraft from 30 different customers. These include regional airlines, charter operators, and even major carriers. The launch customer will be Bristow Helicopters, which wants to transform its business model by replacing existing rotorcraft used for services such as oil and gas platform support and search and rescue missions with more efficient and environmentally sustainable electric aircraft. The company also intends to move into new activities such as middle mile cargo deliveries. So the operational flexibility of a helicopter the operating costs at or below current fixed wing alternatives is really the promise of the uh, Electra Eastol, and that's been that's why it's been so well received. And Electra argues that it will be able to get its Eastol aircraft into service faster than many of the Evatol contenders that are counting on regulators to agree ways to issue type certificates for new approaches to powered lift. Compared to the airplanes that have to do some kind of flight transition, right, that take off vertically, transition horizontally, that transition is a, is a, is a big step, both in the certification process and in the pilot operational process. I mean, I think when you look at uh, the V-22 and the history that it's gone through, the enormous expense that it's taken to get that airplane certified, the fact that today the President of the United States flies on a traditional helicopter while he's followed by two V-22s. They don't put the president on a V-22 yet. Um, and the reason is because when you have to do transitions of flight modes like that, it does raise the risk um, across the, the portfolio, the technical risk, the certification risk, the operational risk. Part of the Electra idea is to avoid all of that. Our team has done a number of these electric vertical and takeoff and landing designs and built and flown and tested them. So we understand the challenges of those. And this airplane really emerged from a focused study of how you overcome the different challenges, especially the operating cost challenges of a, of a vehicle that has to do transit mode transitions. Electra says it's getting close to starting flight testing with a two-seat technology demonstrator to prove the Eastall concept. And it wants to be ready to start deliveries of the full-scale aircraft in 2026. Well, this is just one of many of the new aircraft programs that we're following at futureflight.aero. Keep coming back to us for news around the clock from this exciting sector and full access to our program database.